Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another live episode of Flaming Freedom. You could be listening to us via the Liberty Radio Network, or you might be watching us on our cams via Ustream. If you're listening to the downloaded podcast, I hope you'll join us live next episode. Uh, we are here every Sunday from 10 a.m. until noon. And you can also join the conversation, if you would like, by tuning in via Skype. That is In Your Head Shows. Just Skype us at In Your Head Shows, and you can join us at any time if you'd like to to say something about what we're talking about or if you have a new subject you'd like to bring up for us to discuss. This is your host, Dale. And Sabriel. Thank you, Sabriel, for joining us. We have another guest host who should be in shortly. Uh, there's been some kind of delay, and we're not going to worry about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, now uh, let me run down real quick some things we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about queer baiting. We're going to expand your vocabulary as we do every week by talking about an urban dictionary word of the week. We oh, have geez. some <laughs> Right. We have some quick announcements to make. Uh, we've had, I've been corrected about something I said in a previous show, so we're going to give credit to that listener who corrected me. Thank you for that. I appreciate it, by the way. If I say something and I'm horribly, horribly wrong, please correct me, and I will try to, if I remember, make a, make a point to bring, bring it up in the next show. Also, someone has a beef with me about what I said about gay marriage and Adam Kokesh's take on it. Then we have some other, uh, quite a few other listener comments. Some people have made comments about previous shows. I'm going to go over those. There's a heartwarming transition story about a young trans man, a tra uh, well, a trans boy. He's quite young. We'll mention that briefly. Uh, there's a Nicolas Cage being in a new Left Behind movie. That's shocking. Christians have shared some indoctrination advice from Hitler on a billboard. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Uh, Sabri, I know you'll like this. We're going to talk about Supernatural, and they're being accused of queer baiting. Yeah, that's, yep. yep. They've and been that's, doing that for a while, Yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, queer baiting, again, is our Urban Dictionary Word of the Week. I thought it was appropriate to educate people on that since we're going to talk about it. Indeed. And then the other thing, there's an article written about, are you psychopathic enough? That's <laughs> maybe not the perfect word, uh, sociopath. They're discovering that, like many things, like sexual orientation, trans... Uh, your trans status and things like that are a sliding scale. Well, apparently sociopathy is also a sliding scale. Or at least that's the point of view of this article, which makes sense. Mm. I mean, humans are not binary creatures, right? Yeah. And then uh, to tranny or not to tranny, we're going to talk about the controversy about RuPaul using the word tranny kind of casually. We're going to talk about what is an honor killing. That's something that a lot of people don't know about because it's gone out of style, which is probably a good thing, but we'll define that. And then... Uh, is it still cannibalism if you only eat vegan? That's a, I'm going to talk about that and what I mean by that. That's a, that's a troll title, obviously, but <laughs> that's a teaser title. But uh, I'll get into what I mean by that. So, so there you go. Uh, those, are, those are some things we're going to talk about today. Maybe I should point the camera like almost directly at you. <laughs> since, since I'm new and interesting, I got the camera pointing at a big empty seat right now. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, and I'm going to talk about my visit to uh, SUNY Albany and some interesting things I learned about the history of the Libertarian Party. And, oh, uh, and absolutely. Rights. Let's do that. Let's do that first because okay. I want to give our guest co hosts priority when it comes to subject material. Why, thank you. So I was invited to speak at um for the SUNY Albany YAL group and I think that was was that in late March and I had a great time I was nervous because they asked me to talk about the um the uh, libertarian approach to LGBT rights uh and and I I feel like that's sort of a history topic and I'm not so big on the history more of a theory philosophy kind of gal um, but it's, it turns out I know more about it than I thought I did. Cool. Um, and of course I also took the opportunity to promote New Hampshire to all those, uh, YAL kids. Um, I feel like college kids are a great demographic to whom to promote the, uh, free state project because they haven't put well, down a, too many roots. Yet. I, I tend to agree because yeah, exactly. They, they're not, they don't have families and children, which make moving a lot more complicated mm -hmm. yep and of course i promoted flaming freedom like if you want to know more about the lgbt view of liberty issues you should 
you know, go to flamingfreedom.com. Our, our latest tagline is uh, LGBT libertarians shooting the poop. And I felt like I needed to change it because a good chunk of our subjects veer away from strictly LGBT That's issues. True. That's true. But it, it is, is the true. core of the show. I actually got a complaint from someone. Well, it's a, it was a mild complaint. Someone who listens to the show now and then. He's not a real regular listener, but he said he listened to a show and we spent so much time talking about atheism, for instance. And he said it just kind of felt like false advertising. You spent so little time on LGBT issues. Well, I'm happy to queer it up whenever I come on. So speaking <laughs> right. of which, I am getting gay married in 13 yes, days. Yes, and I intend to be there. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a total... Uh, can I say clusterfuck now it, that we're back on LRN? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Okay. It, it's fine. Um, now, let me just clarify something. It's the last weekend. You're, it's the Saturday... Of Pork Fest, No, it's right? the first oh. Saturday. Oh, it's the, it's the it Saturday is. immediately prior to Pork Fest. Oh, okay. The, uh, then uh, I was sure that I had gotten it wrong because I thought it was the Saturday during Pork Fest. Nope. nope. Okay. It's the Saturday right before. All right. Then then I'm, my calendar's correct and I'll be I'll, I'll come up there for that. Okay, sweet. <laughs> awesome. It would it would not be the same without you, Dale. Okay. <laughs> um anyway, so uh, I talked about the LGBT approach to... That, that is invitation only, by the way. That's not a public yeah, event. Yeah, So kids. I'm sorry. Those of you who are listening, I just told you, don't, don't just, don't crash the, the wedding. Please. Yeah. Um, there will be no food for it's you It's hard anyway. to plan for something like that. Yeah. <laughs> without RSVPs. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, so the, and the other guest they invited um, was the treasurer of Outright Libertarians and, oh, Crap, I'm blanking on his name right now. Do you know Dale? I don't know who oh, that is. Crap. I'm he was sorry. really cool. Um and he uh, he had documents from way back when way back when the Libertarian Party was founded in 1976. Gasp. So long ago. <laughs> Not really. And uh he pointed out that the the Libertarian Party platform has been exactly the same as it regards, in general, pretty much, and as it regards uh, gay rights, um, that, you know, since the beginning they said that uh, the government should treat uh, gay people the same as um, straight people. and a lot, of gay, a lot of libertarians disagree with that, which is kind of ridiculous, but I'll get into that later. Uh, and also, he had a document, oh, and the Democrats, whereas the Democrats... That that was 1976 was the year that Jimmy Carter said, um, "Hate the sin, love the sinner." So obviously, the Democrats were not um, were not if for that, LGBT rights back then. Um, uh, that's actually a, a relatively recent thing. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The, fa the idea of Democrats being the, the the proponents of individual liberties, or mm. what you might call what would you call it? personal liberties yeah i guess that's, what that's they, a relatively that's what recent they thing call it, anyway it, it was not this was not a partisan thing in particular they they latched on to it at some point because the 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 republicans also a recent thing for the republicans to woo the attention of socially conservative people that's that's since reagan mm -hmm. reagan pretty much initiated that and then george bush senior continued it and kind of took it in a direction that reagan didn't intend a little more drastic. So all of that is relatively recent. In fact, uh, Al Al Gore, one of his biggest supporters, and he, he personally sought their their assistance in some of his campaigns was the Westboro Baptist Church. Oh. So a lot, and, and and of course later Al Gore became on, got jumped on got on the bandwagon with supporting individual liberties because it was a political decision, and yeah. and and the Democrat Party has been associated with that. Um, sort of ever since. It's a relatively recent thing. Yeah. But hold your thoughts because in a few minutes we'll be back and I'll let you continue some of these. Okay, some cool. Of your, your thoughts on this. Cool. You are listening to Flaming Freedom live via the Liberty Radio Network. You could also be watching us live via the Ustream cam. Uh, go to flamingfreedom.com to find out how to watch us live. In a moment, we'll be back, so stay tuned.
I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom where we discuss LGBT topics from a liberty perspective what sorts of things they'd done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap lacquered. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't know what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to fuck. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone two, you worthless bitch. Brat. I have flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia, and I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show for you. Please, just click like and share. That's all we ask. Welcome back, folks, and thank you for listening to Flaming Freedom, where LGBT libertarians shoot the poop every Sunday from 10 a.m. until noon. We're live via the Liberty Radio Network. You can find that at LRN.FM. You can also watch us live on the cams at Ustream.com. Some of you are listening to us via the downloaded podcast. I feel like I'm time traveling when I say that. Mm -hmm. This is obviously (laughs) live. Yeah. But then there are people listening to us via downloaded recording. There's also Liberty Radio Network also replays us. Oh, right. At various points throughout the week. So there are some people are listening to us. In the the, future. In the future. Exactly. But you can listen to us live next week. That's next Sunday, 10 a.m. until noon. Yeah, the, either of those choices. You can also chime in at any point via Skype. Just Skype us at In Your Head Shows. We are interested to hear your opinions on things. And we're we're usually reasonably nice to our yeah. callers. Yeah, oh, definitely. I, I don't think we've ever had people calling in too upset. I wouldn't. Which surprises me. Not when I'm here, anyway. <laughs> I don't know what I... I don't know how I've managed to not get upset someone. Uh, I, um, oh, you have, but they probably don't call in. Maybe that's it. Yeah. But you, uh, we were, we, I'm going to let you continue your story in just a moment, so I want you to hold okay, your thought. Gotcha. There's a few quick announcements. There's some quickies. Uh, one of them is a listener had a beef with me. Let me, let me read their comment on my, something I mentioned last week. I criticized Adam Kokesh because he said libertarians should be gay, which I was on board with, <laughs> and I was loving his video for a period of time, and then he started blaming... Gay people who want gay, the, the government to recognize their marriage contracts at, for expanding the size and scope of government, which I think is ridiculous. I've written an article about that. Yeah. So here's this guy's thought. His name is Alan. He says, I got a beef with you, Dale. Gay marriage is horrible. Legalized gay marriage is the absolute worst thing that could happen ever. Really? Ever? The worst thing that could happen ever. Uh, like, there could be a second Hitler... There could be a meteor that strikes the earth and wipes, wipes out, out half humanity. of the life. Yeah, all humanity. Yeah. Okay. I know this is going to sound trollish. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound trollish. But it's not. Gay marriage is a conservative plot. Oh. Yeah, those conservatives yeah. are just all They're on board. They're so pro gay marriage. Yeah, with all their, like, uh, trying to pass amendments to the Constitution to ban it forever and ever mm-hmm. in our government. It's a conservative plot to quote unquote normalize homosexuality. Queers and queer relationships don't fall into the normal social order. Haven't you read A Renegade History of the United States? Actually, I have not read that, but it's on my reading list. I have a long reading list. Yeah. You know, it sounds, when I first read his comment, that sounded like a criticism. Like, you know, queers aren't normal, but uh, he's using it as a compliment. Yeah, he's saying that our relationships are are more healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than, than the conservative notion and subversive in a good way. And, and I'm with him on that. But there are reasons mm-hmm. that just come down to straightforward ne- reasons that why gay people need to have their rec- marriages acknowledged. Yeah. If you enter a contract with another person, which you are, which some people have a reason to do sometimes. <laughs> uh, you just mentioned your gay marriage. Yeah. Some people have a reason to do that and they need the government to acknowledge it or else they get fucked over in yep. a number of ways. So that's just the reality. I love that, you know, I'm sh- I'm on board with promoting non-standard relationship practices mm-hmm. that don't fit the conservative social agenda. But I don't think the government acknowledging contracts that adults make with each other 
more consistently and with less discrimination is the worst thing ever that could ever happen. No. And if the conservatives is not quite, let me finish this yeah, statement and we'll continue talking about it. If the conservatives, both of the traditional and the progressive ilk can get queers to buy into the meet that one special person who is only and forever yours, Prince Charming myth, then they bring queers in line with their conservative moral agenda. Okay. Frack that. Keep gay marriage illegal forever and frack the conservative <laughs> agenda. Okay, your point is made. And I acknowledge it, and I agree with it in some ways. And then I go back to my same criticism that I had of Adam Kokesh's video, which is, it's great if you're idealistic and you're an activist and you're holding out for the perfect world. We, and in the we meantime, some of us are getting... perfect world. Yeah, we're living in the world that we live in, and we're not all idealists. I'm an idealist yeah, I'm on a, a lot of ways. I'm an idealist. I just want to have... I, the, I just want my relationship to have the same legal protections as straight marriages. Uh, yeah, he's failing to acknowledge that as long as the government fails to acknowledge all of our contracts in a consistent manner without discrimination, they're screwing over some of us. Yeah. The government isn't going to stop messing with me and my life and my partner while we wait for them to get out of marriage and all the other aspects of our lives that mm -hmm. they stick their nose into. Yep. And in the meantime, I'm trying to get on with my life. My life is ticking away and I'm going to die someday. <laughs> well, and uh, maybe it will be after the government ends and maybe I will, my life will be extended by technology. Maybe I will live thousands of years. Cryonics. But there's a, who knows, but I might die in five years yeah. and I'm going to live those five years the best I can. Yep. And at the moment, that's in a world where government exists. It yep. sucks, but that's life. Yep. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to uh, quickly uh, finish my story from Albany. So, yeah, go ahead. I've got some more viewer comments, but we'll get to those afterward. So the treasurer of Outright Libertarians, Rob Power, uh, was there also. And he, he went over some uh, historical notes from the founding of the Libertarian Party. And he pointed out that now the Democrats are all... Uh, it, you know, they now they uh, support crap like hate speech legislation and and uh, distinguishing hate crimes from non hate crimes. And uh, and the, whereas libertarians don't and the Democrats think that the Libertarian Party needs to update their platform. Um, but that's because and the reason there's been such a drastic change is because the Democrats, like the Republican uh, National Party, do not have principles, whereas the Libertarian Party platform is based on principles. So that's why it hasn't changed. Um, right. And also he had an inter he had a scan to, to a point more so than right. the other parties. Lately, yeah. they've they've been they're not perfect. Yeah. Uh, and he also had a scan of Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera's marriage certificate from the 40s, which I thought was fascinating. And he pointed out that it didn't say wife and husband on this marriage certificate. Uh, so the argument that, oh, we'll have to, like, change all the forms and that'll be more expensive and that's more bureaucracy. The, the forms didn't say wife and husband until the 90s when Hawaii threatened to start marrying gay couples so it's not that hard to have spouse A and spouse B on the on the forms because they were already changed to be heteronormative in the 90s. So we should so just, you know, we unchange just change them, them back. Yeah. Just revert them back to yeah. what they were. Of course, in the 40s, they had lines for your race. Uh, and I was surprised to find out Caitlin and I went to the city clerk's office on Friday. They still have lines for your race. Of course, now it's under the guise of demographic information. Right, They're just collecting it. They're yeah. not going to use it for anything. Yeah. Just and your trust heritage, us. your like yeah. background too, yeah. and your education level. And I was like, you know what? That's none of their business. And we didn't fill out those lines. Yeah. I was, they were asking me all that stuff on Facebook. I made a profile just to handle the Flaming Freedom page. And I was like, screw you. I'm not answering all this stuff. I don't give a crap. Yep. And it doesn't matter for what I'm doing. Thank you folks for listening. We're going to be back in just a few minutes. So I hope you will stay tuned and listen to us live. I mentioned to Sabrielle offline I asked her if she had taken her show medicine, and she didn't. <laughs> that, that's okay. I call it my show medicine. I do my two shots right before the show. 
I do one more shot at the hour mark, and I've because I've done uh, over many months of doing, well, years of doing the show. I have learned the magic number, the just the right amount of alcohol, <laughs> and the timing <laughs> to loosen up, right, to relax and loosen up without quite getting to the point where I slur my speech and I'm a sloppy drunk. <laughs> It's, it's, and and, and yeah, manage to keep up with the technical aspects of the show. There's always occasional problems. There's, there's there's no way around it. There's just too many things that can go wrong. Ustream messes up the the stream sometimes. It just stops working all of a sudden, and and we have a gap in the video or something. That hasn't been too bad lately. I've been staying on top of that. I'm figuring out the settings that seem to work for that. But uh, but anyway, yeah. So I'm a little bit drunk. It's five That's o'clock it somewhere, works. right? It's Isn't that what you Southerners say? I, I guess lots Sweden. of people everywhere say that. I think in Sweden it's around that. <laughs> it's six hours ahead, so it's like 4.30 in Sweden or something. 4.30 p.m. Uh, this is your host, Dale. And Sabriel. And uh, thank you, Sabriel. Our third guest host will be showing up shortly. Uh, Sunday morning is a new schedule for us, and it's thrown a few people off. <laughs> but uh, let me go through a few more. Um, we have another. We had quite a few responses People had comments about our previous shows, and the next comment was from Shane. Now, he was talking about Obamacare. He says there's a discussion on exploit. He put a link. He said there's a discussion on exploiting a loophole in Obamacare by forming or joining an already existing health share program. The person interviewed works for a group that happens to be religious, but he says to have a qualifying health share program, according to ACA, that's the more official name, Obamacare is... The Affordable yeah. Care Act. Yeah, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you just need uh, Obamacare slang. You right. just need a group of people with a shared set of religious and or ethical principles. So that means someone could form a health share program set up for people who believe in the non-aggression principle. Mm -hmm. Would you guys like to help form one of these? You can listen on the link there. It gives a lot of in-depth info on how they keep costs down. So I'll, I'll look into that. Maybe we can... Oh I yeah, look into that because I'd love to not get a fine. My sister's paying a fine. Uh, it uh, her health health care for her family will cost so much that she pays Obamacare a fine now. She can't afford it. So since she can't afford health care, she has to pay the government a fine. Uh, thanks Obamacare for providing universal health care for all at uh, for free. Oh yeah, I know, you're that's so what it was sold as. Uh -huh. And now my own sister is has less money every year and still has no health care because she can't afford it. But the, because of Obamacare. But but there you go. So does thanks, she not... Thanks, liberals. Does she not qualify for, like... Because supposedly... No. Apparently she's in that that magic grace area uh, where she's, she's uh, considered wealthy, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Uh, she lost her house recently. Um, Ouch. Uh, yeah, they lived in a house for years and lost it because they couldn't make the payments. And now they're renting a house... And apparently she's too wealthy to get help with the health care, but wealthy enough that she has to pay a fine to keep from going uh, to jail or something. I don't know what happens if you don't pay that I'm, fine. Well, I'm, I'm curious if she just didn't pay the fine, what would happen? Eventually just, jail. Eventually. I don't know. You know, apparently she's afraid enough that she, yeah. But uh, anyway, liberals have, are convinced that we've got socialized health care. That's the goal, by the way. Of course. Just get, I mean, people are going to realize this sucks. And then, oh, we just have to go full on socialized health care. Um, and, 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 and that's how they'll get it by producing this half-assed measure, which sucks so that people will say, oh, we need health, socialized health care. Look how bad things are. Yeah. <laughs> Look yep. how fucked over we're getting. Uh, and he, Shane made a number of comments. He said, uh, within the first minute or so of this podcast, Dell talks about dreaming about chasing an animal down, tackling it down and shredding it. <laughs> that's not true. That was in the last segment of last week's, but yeah. I made a short clip Close of enough. it. Close enough. I, I did post it in the first, I put it in the, that clip in, yeah. the, in the beginning of the podcast if you download it. He then woke up with a boner and jacked. Right after, <laughs> one of his male guests says, I just dream about D&D. &D. The way that is timed could mean he also woke up with a boner and jacked off to D&D. &D. It's very possible. Very possible. D&D &D can have, uh, you know, it runs the gamut from, I guess, you know... A sexy role, I guess. Have you ever played powerful. a game that got you turned on? Did you ever have a DM run a game so um, no. titillating? I wish that you. Well, got Dale, turned on? Dale, you're my DM, so I guess that's a that's, a that's a goal for our next session. Is and in my game, there are people with prehensile penises and things like that. That's true. <laughs> so you never know. You never know. All right, Brittany's here. Hi. Hi, Brittany. I came in because you said prehensile penises. Right. <laughs> Wasn't it great? She walked in right on that. 
Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> well Shane has. Uh, d- d- yeah, that's um, d- uh, t- too much information. Sorry, uh, we yeah. can't can't catch people up on that. There's uh, there's weird stuff going on in my D and D game. Uh, Dale talks about rescuing a little boy from being hit by a car. I would rather jerk him out than let a car hit him. Right afterwards, someone said, jerk him out or jerk him off. Well, <laughs> R-O-F-L, naughty boy. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not playing into your pedo jokes yeah. at all. Wow. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. I guess we shouldn't be surprised when our listeners have dirty, dirty minds. Yeah. No, that's what makes it exciting. That's the kind of people we attract to this show, I guess. Uh, especially with your after dark <laughs> shows. Yeah, exactly. Well, all, every show is an after dark show now. <laughs> Dale, here's another comment. Also it's totally the, dark out. Yeah. Another comment on a previous show. Dale said Quicksilver is supposed to be gay. I am open to having some openly gay superheroes, but had not heard of that. Perhaps it was a comic reboot I had not heard of. I checked the Wikipedia, Wikipedia entry on Quicksilver, also the official Marvel Wiki. They mentioned numerous incarnations of Quicksilver and various relationships with women, including his sister, the Scarlet Witch. I don't think they meant like a Game of Thrones kind of thing. Uh, they just meant that he has a relationship. A relationship, like, like a yeah. sibling relationship. A, a platonic sibling relationship. Yet no mention Unlike of him being... the Winchesters be- right. segue to come. <laughs> exactly. Yet no mention of him being gay. Perhaps the actor in the movie is gay, and that is why he thinks Quicksilver is. No, no. I, I don't believe the actor is gay. I, I wish he was, but I don't think he is. And my mistake was it was North Star. Yep. Yeah. North Star has silvery hair. He was an X-Men. He was a member of the X-Men. And he had super speed powers. I don't think he's as fast as Quicksilver, but he has other powers. Oh, so you right? got them confused. Yes. Not because the names are similar, but because they have similar powers. Yes. It shows and that you are... Appearances. Uh, you are a comic book nerd to know that a enough little. about that. I get all my comic book information from my friends who read comic books. Mm, yeah. <laughs> And like I get it secondhand. Hand. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's secondhand. It's easy to get stuff like that mixed up. Fandom osmosis. But they look incredibly similar, too. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons why you could get them mixed up. Silvery hair, uh, super speed powers, and some association with the X-Men. Right. Yep. Right. I, I don't, actually, I'm not completely sure if Quicksilver is an X-Man at any point. I know he's going to be in the Avengers movie coming up. He's cool. played by Aaron Johnson, the kick-ass guy. I don't know if I'm getting his name right. I think that's his name. Okay. The guy who played Kick-Ass is going to play Kicksilver, Quicksilver oh. in the next yeah. Avengers movie. Air, yeah, Age Aaron of Ultron. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron Taylor Johnson, supposedly. Yeah. So those are a few comments from our listeners. Most of them from just a couple of people. Speaking of listeners, Dason uh, recently moved to the Free State. He's been on the show a couple of times. Oh, well. He was a guest co-host. Shows what I know. <laughs> He has a cute little boy, too. <laughs> oh, does he? Yeah. Yeah. Apollo. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. There's really not a whole lot to say about it, but I am going to link to it in our show page, and I hope people will go and watch it. There's a video about a young trans boy, and it, what's so great about this video is his parents just immediately... They're so well educated about the issues they or they made themselves ed- educated. Mm. Maybe they cared enough about their child and they were they put their child's happiness number one ahead of like, oh, I want my kid to be a certain way. Yeah. And uh, it's a really inspiring video with. And I, so I hope people will go check it out. It's 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 exploded. It's become viral. So cool. I hope people will go check that out. But his name is Ryland and uh, I'm going to link to it in the show page. So go watch that video. It's only about six or seven minutes. It's it's really heartwarming, and I just wish more, I wish more people could watch that and go, wow! I just I want my kid to be happy. That's the most important thing mm-hmm. as a parent for yeah. me to be concerned about: happy and prosperous. And instead of trying to shape my child into something they're not. You are listening to Flaming Freedom, where LGBT libertarians shoot the poop once a week every <laughs> Sunday from 10 a.m. to noon. Please stick around. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for listening live to the Flaming Freedom episode on Liberty Radio Network, as well as Ustream. You can watch us on the cam on Ustream.com right now. If you'd like, just go to FlamingFreedom.com. On the left side of the page are links to both LRN and Ustream. This is your host, Dale. And Sabriel. And Brittany. Brittany, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> <You're> I, <welcome. laughs> I understand why she uh, was confused about the time, the starting time, because we are going to be live at Port Fest 
what on day? Saturday. It's not our standard time. Mm. Normally, we're on Sundays from 10 a.m. to noon. Just for Pork Fest, we're going to be on sat just based on the availability of the media mm-hmm. room and things like that. We're going to be on Saturday from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. That's plenty of time for you to sleep in a little bit, be hungover. But we're going to have hangover <laughs> snacks. We're going to have refreshments specifically to help with hangovers because it is the morning after a Friday night at Pork Fest. Right, so it's true. It's understandable. Yeah. So you should drag your ass up out of bed. <laughs> your bed's going to be uncomfortable anyway because you're camping. Yeah. Come have some hangover snacks that we'll have in the media room, and uh, come watch the show live at Pork Fest. We'll bring, we'll let people on to talk about their Pork Fest, Pork Fest experience and things like that. I'll try to have each guest co-host give them a little chance to be on if possible, and uh, stuff like that. So make sure you join us live at Pork Fest. Go to porkfest.com to find out more about that. Uh, Brittany, you mentioned that uh, I, I asked I asked Sabriel in a previous segment if she'd taken her show medicine. I my, brought one. Yes, exactly. My show medicine <laughs> is two shots right before, usually two vodka shots right before the show, and then one more halfway through because at the hour mark because that's about how long it takes for one shot to go through your liver, I understand. Yes. <laughs> so if I want to maintain my caliber of host professionalism, <laughs> you got to take your show medicine. I don't know how many ounces this thing. Eight, 16 fluid ounces. That's, Excellent. I guess that's all I need. And and thank you for the eye candy, both of you lovely ladies on the show. Thank That's you. That's sexist. I'm sorry. Uh, n- no, boys can be eye candy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, don't worry. We'll move Brittany closer to the camera for the next sometimes, segment. Sometimes Carlos is our eye candy. Carlos or, is a pretty man. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell him that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> At Carlos, he already hideous. knows. He doesn't he, need his head to be any bigger, right? He yeah. knows. Yeah. So there you go. We've got Brittany back now. Nicholas Cage. Oh, you know what? We have a Christian on now. So you're an expert on this. Nicholas oh, Cage is talking about getting raptured. Oh, so. oh, that's good. Good for him. Get raptured. <laughs> have a great now, time. I, can, I think I brought this up before. I think we talked about this with you before. The whole rapture thing. Do you think people are going to just go poof and be gone or, or get sucked up into the sky? Like this is the end. You know, here's my thing about... Uh, uh, about organized religion you know (laughs) okay the bible is a book written by people 60 years after the events happened right minimum of 60 minimum minimum, right right? and and revelations is just a dude was isolated on an island hallucinating and wrote some shit down (laughs) i'm sorry for every other christian out there this is my how dare you this is my personal opinion i'm not a theologist by any stretch of the imagination and I'm barely a Catholic because here I am at 1030 on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking Blaspheming. Beer. You're on this blasphemous show instead of doing going to church as you're supposed to. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so, no. I. But when I was a okay. little kid, man, I had a lot of problems with religion. And one of them was like the rapture. And I'm like, are zombies going to come? Like, to me, it was zombies. <laughs> like, people are kind of, they're going to so raise relieved. you from the dead. Oh, my God. I'm so relieved, Brittany, because I was about to rip into uh Nicholas Cage and I when there's a Christian on the show I try to be more tactful than I normally am. <laughs> but that's just it though. But see your kind of your your take on Christianity does not seem derpy to me. Like it doesn't seem kooky, ridiculous. No. Right? So so I feel okay. I feel like I like, like you know I, I I every now and then I try to specify, look, I'm talking about some very specific ridiculous viewpoints here. And and yes, they're Christians. There's people saying these things, but it, don't group everyone together. No, obviously. I, no Everyone's one wants different. to be grouped together about in anything. I hate labels. Like yeah. you're like, oh, the Christians here, and I'm like, that didn't automatically stick. Oh, he's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Christian well, I was never, like, look, I'm always a little bit worried that like, am I am I about to criticize something that someone in the room is going to take issue with? Which is okay though, because oh, then we'll have a discussion about it. I'll tell you if I take issue. It. Yeah, yeah, we'll have a cool. discussion about it, and it'll be fine. I uh, that's I, I I love the idea. I I would like for us to be able to have frank straightforward face-to-face discussions that's how people learn that's how we progress yep. that's how we vet ideas for their merit mm-hmm. is by having open honest discussions about them and nicholas cage is going to be in a remake of the left behind series which kind of blew my mind a little bit i was like really i read those books i read like the first seven when i was 13 ish oh. Oh wow! Yeah, it was. I, it got me very worried about my friends who weren't ah, Christians. You, you thought you were going to go? I was heaven, worried they were about be them staying behind and yeah. get raped by demons and or things whatever. Like that. Yeah. Have you seen This Is the End? No. Oh my God! I fell asleep Watch ten that minutes movie. in. I was so. And those of you who are upset about so, spoil, really? Man, I was. I was 
I was so, I had had so many show medicines that oh. I fell asleep 10 minutes in. It wasn't the movie's fault then. No. Because that movie is one of my favorite movies. It's a five star movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. This is the end. Uh, I, I mean, at this point, I'm not going to uh, apologize for spoilers. You've had a chance to see it. Go watch it. But it's about the apocalypse. And it's just brilliant. And it's hilarious. That's where all the celebrities have to deal with. They're at a house party. And they're playing themselves. Yeah. Yes. You have James James Franco. Yeah. yeah. And Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen, is, it's his brainchild. It's brilliant. Seth Rogen is a genius. And that mm-hmm. kid from Juno. You yes. Michael Sarah. Yeah, Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah's in it. He's hilarious. Yeah. He plays someone so not what you expect. And he's playing himself. Yeah. Just uh, that's uh, that's Just the spoilers I'm going to give you. Themselves. That's all the spoilers I'm going to give you. It's about the apocalypse. Go watch that movie. Rent it. Buy it. It's the best movie. It's one of the best movies of all time. And it's one of the funniest movies of all time. But in any case, a uh, uh, straightforward stereotypical rapture happens. <laughs> People getting sucked up into the sky, going to heaven, and but the people who are not heathen proper Christians. Right, the heathen celebrities get left behind. <laughs> um, apparently, though, Nicholas Clay- Cage is claiming not to be one of those heathen celebrities. He's going to go. Uh, he. Is this like. Here we Mel- go. Let me see. If, is this his quote? It says, My greatest hope for the film Left Behind is that it works as something that people will be entertained and thrilled by, but they'll also go home and they'll have conversations with their family and they'll ask, Do you think this could happen or couldn't happen? And it'll inspire discussions and closeness. No, it, it couldn't happen. But hey, <laughs> you know what? That's a tactful statement. Yeah. I'm reading that again now. I remember when I read it, I was like, he believes in the rapture. No, he's not saying that. No, it sounds pretty. He's not saying that he he's believes saying... in it, and he's not saying he doesn't. Right. Well, you it. know. He's being very tactful. I think he's saying what Whenever... is acceptable to the people who are paying him to be in this movie. You know what? Every time I watch a Nicolas Cage movie, I go back home and I think, is this or is this not possible? <laughs> 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 I have okay. My, wait, 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 wait. Those are fiction, though. This is based on real life you, you prophecies mean, of you things that are for not, sure going to happen. <laughs> the, mean, pro, the the rapture. You just ruined my whole life. I thought every Nicolas Cage movie was autobiographical. <laughs> that movie where he sees into the future and he lives the future, and then he gets to go back and do it differently, and he can like dodge bullets and everything. It's totally. You mean National for Treasure reals. is not for real? <laughs> I thought there was a map on the back of the Constitution. Oh, my God. He sucked Abraham Lincoln's wiener in that movie. Nuh-uh. Oh, what? my God. He was Is like, oh, Abraham Lincoln preserved. Egg? No, no. That, that movie, National oh, Treasure, was so status. Oh. He talks about Abraham Lincoln and how he preserved the Union and how the, the United States yeah. and freedom was all based on Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, just don't get me started on Abraham Lincoln and... No. The idea that he somehow ended slavery. And... You know, I'm not sure why anybody would want Nicolas Cage in their movie because I have I know a lot of people who refuse to see anything with Nicolas Cage in it, no matter how good it is. Like Kick Ass, the first one was yeah. so good, and I had a and I have a friend who I thought would super enjoy it, and he said no. There's I'm no almost there. way. No I almost way. dislike Nicolas Cage that much, but not quite because I loved Kick Ass. I really enjoyed it Kick was Ass. Great. But, but I am really almost act. that way. Like anything that Nicolas Cage, I'm not generally a fan of. He I always, thought he was good in that movie. He though. always plays Nicolas Cage. Yeah. yeah, is the problem. Yeah, yeah, is one of the many problems. It's also he, his it, face and Tom his voice. Cruise is worse for me because he is so kooky. Yeah, with no, his Scientology. Go ahead. I was about to say. I, I was about to say. I don't have any celebrities where I'm like, I'm not going to see that movie because of Tom Cruise. But there's a new Tom Cruise movie, out, and I'm like, who would go freaking watch this douche? I'm probably going to go watch it, but I'm going to be so distracted What's by this his Tom Cruise private movie? life. I can't. I can't separate him and see him as the character he's playing because all I can see is Tom Cruise, the insane Scientologist whack job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Scientologists make fundamentalist christians look sane oh yeah I- i'm sorry i'm gonna have to convert to scientology and come back on the show <laughs> <laughs> just to make me uncomfortable oh, like oh i'm about to rip on scientology but britney's here oh dear <laughs> all right folks <laughs> we're gonna be back very shortly flaming freedom where libertarian lgbt folks shoot the poop we'll be right back stay tuned Welcome back to Flaming Freedom, where LGBT libertarians shoot the poop. This is your host, Dale. This is Brittany. 
I'm Sabriel. Thank you for joining us, ladies. You are giving our listeners some wonderful eye candy on the cams. So those of you who are listening to the downloaded podcast, this will teach you a lesson. Watch us on the cam via Ustream next week from 10 a.m. until noon. We moved if Brittany you want that. closer to the camera yeah, we because did. she's yeah. showing way more cleavage than me. Right. I brought him out. Freedom. I, it was not my choice. Don't get mad at me. And send your hate mail to them. About what? About about sexist cleavage uh, eye candy. I love boobs. Boobs are my favorite thing. <laughs> boobs are pretty. It's, it's not great. sexist. They're right. open for men and women to view. All right. There you go then. So. Don't get, just don't get mad at me, folks. There You heard it. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to Flaming Freedom. Go to our website, flamingfreedom.com. We do put a lot of effort. This is a part-time job for me that I don't get paid for. And I don't, I'm not going to hold it against you if you don't want to make a donation. But I am going to hold it against you if you won't go and, and just click the left mouse button once or twice. Click like, click share, go to flaming, go to facebook.com slash flaming freedom and click like. And then scroll down and check off notifications so you'll actually get notifications for the show. And then click like and share. Click like on our YouTube videos and just get the word out. It, 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 the effort it takes for that is so minimal that I'm minimal, minimal. You I had said my it second right shot. the first time. Yeah, I had my second shot. You already. mean your third shot? That, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, the effort is so minimal that I'm a little bit offended that people won't bother to do it. So there you go. I'm guilt tripping you. I'm guilt tripping you. Go well, do that. Are you sure I'm not going to get mad at you for not donating, but I am going to get mad at you if you won't click the left mouse button. It just takes such minimal effort. Uh, I did a promo about that recently. Um, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We post videos now that have excerpts from the show. If you have a short attention span and don't want to listen to an hour <laughs> and 20 minutes. No. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yes. An hour and 20 minutes. Uh, when we edit out the, the, the commercials for you on our podcast. Then uh, if you don't want to listen for that long, just go and check out our YouTube channel. And we do post excerpts um, that are edited down for your short attention spans. Yeah. <laughs> I was catching up on some that way. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was fun. Jason and I were doing it. He's like, this apparently has more, one of the most likes. And so we watched a few of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a yeah. good time. The Lesbian Porn Viagra Boner Challenge, by the way, is over 350,000 hits. It's I'm surprised we don't get more subscribers from that. But people do seem to like it. They get a kick out of it. So go check that out, if nothing else, on our YouTube channel. And then subscribe. So let's, uh, ca let's uh, figure out where we're at. <laughs> Christian sharing indoctrination advice from Hitler. Is the there we go. Thing. What? There I'm we on, go. I'm on top of this. This, is, this blows my mind. Now, I realize that there are some derpy Christians out there, present company excluded, obviously, there are some derpy Christians out there, but they actually quoted Hitler about indoctrinating children at a young age. And he, he said, let's, let's get the exact quote here for you, that they he, posted up on a billboard. He alone who owns the youth gains the future, Adolf Hitler. Oh, God. And what he's saying is if you indoctrinate kids at a young enough age, they'll stay indoctrinated their whole life. You get them young before they have a chance to use critical thinking skills, before they have critical thinking skills to question the information that you're trying to funnel into their brains. And, and then, this was a Christian organization doing this. And I, I can't help but say, but remind people that so many Christians are that way because they were born into Christian households and they were taught this at a very young age before they could question it. Uh, again, a, v a very specific sort of fundamentalist <laughs> yeah, Christianity. I'm just, I'm just really glad I had my specific upraising because, like, I remember being in like, <laughs> I remember we you see CDs like the after school because I go to Catholic school and we go to like our religion class every Tuesday, and I had these teachers like that they were like, well, I left the church when I was young, and they were like, and I would recommend it. And it was a very a liberal way of thinking about Catholicism, if that makes any mm. sense. Like, sure, I, sure. like, and I remember having a priest that was like, well, if you're going to question it, then keep questioning and keep questioning and keep questioning. Try, try, try again. Like, that, that, that does seem unusual to me. That but, was, but maybe I'm very biased. Because, I don't know. I, I don't, I hope more people had my exposure to it because I'm not, you know, the indoctrined Catholic. I, I have my own brain and thoughts. Don't and, you think that's, that's non typical though? Surely you've heard lots of stories from Catholics who had their wrists beat with, with, uh, but the generation before. Okay. You yeah, think the, they don't the really new generation. generation the, no, I think my generation is is probably a little bit of the transition because you got to think those you know nuns that were forty back then were sixty and still teaching because nuns don't retire. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, they retire by a, dying. <laughs> yeah, they do. I have a friend uh, who's my age and he had a terrible experience in the Catholic 
church. He was an altar boy. He wasn't like sexually abused or anything, but it really screwed him up anyway. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that involved. My family was broken. You know, like we we were tra- we were travelers. I mean, I there was a lot going on in my family, you know, but uh, we were we were always at the parish my mother grew up in, which was two hours away. So the church I actually like went to or like got educated in wasn't the church I was at a lot. So the church that I grew up in or went to every Sunday until I was about 10, that's the one that my grandparents helped found. Okay. So it, it was a different, and that priest was an alcoholic. Everyone knew he was an alcoholic. Weird. But, uh, oh, sorry. I'm just getting excited. No, it's fine. But, that's uh, fine. I just want people to be able to hear you better. No, it, I don't know. I'm, I'm glad I had the raising I did. Now my, fam- my, my family drives me nuts because I feel like I was more <laughs> Catholic than they were growing up. I was the one who, so like after everything settled down in my family, I went to church by myself. I was in the youth group. Oh, wow. Like I sang at youth masses. Things like that. My mom never went. And then in the past two years, it's been like the past four to six years, and they, they feel like they're getting more liberal, libertarian, not liberal. They feel like they're they're okay. developing. Well, really, they're just believing, which they never believed when I was growing up, that religion should be pushed on other people. Like, I was uh, never raised to think that way. Uh, and, and it wasn't until like well, here's the thing, I though. was out of the house, my mom's like, oh, well, we got to convert these people. And I'm like, who are you? Well, here's, hold on, though. If you believe that, there's an eternal afterlife. If you believe that your consciousness is going to be preserved, like it's not in your biological, physical brain, even th- there's all these neurons in there that seem to be holding all the data that we've collected our, throughout our lives, and th- your brain dies like the rest of your body. But if you believe that that consciousness goes on to an eternal afterlife, eternal, etern- we can't even wrap our heads around that. No, yeah. Etern- eternity is something you cannot even wrap your heads around. I have no memory of my life before I was born, but supposedly I have existed forever. I don't know. Um, this eternal afterlife, if you believe in that, then this life is a drop in the ocean. Right. It is so insignificant. And if you believe that someone that someone's eternal afterlife is at stake, you should be devoting every resource possible to converting them. Uh, that's very Protestant. <laughs> <laughs> really? I don't mean to offend it? Protestants. It's oh, okay. so it's so different. I'm very interested in your take on this. Oh, I don't know. I was just raised like I, I was just. Well, what do you think happens when you die? I think whatever you want to happen happens. Really? I really? Have... Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna no, have a bunch here's, of here's... Twinkie slave boys forever. <laughs> there you go. Twinkie no. slave boys that that just want to like please me every moment of the day. Well, that's fantastic. They, they look like uh, <laughs> who do they look like? Like um, uh, who is the Who's Frodo? What's his name? Elijah, Elijah Wood. Wood. Elijah Wood. No, I just... And uh, I just who's have... the guy from Glee? Um, Chris Colfer? The Curse. other one. Darren Chris. God, he's hot. Yes, um, He could Chris. be my... All these that Twinkie, could be... I'm going to have Twinkie Slave Boys for all eternity. Darren Chris and Kara Knightley. That could be my heaven. Just and the two nachos, of them. And nachos. And... No, I'm just Kara kidding. Knightley with her fake boobs from Pirates of the Caribbean now. <laughs> <laughs> Kara Knightley. Who's that again? The really, really skinny British actress. She played Pirates she of the was Caribbean. Pirates. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Okay, I know exactly yeah. who you're talking about. Okay, all right, cool, cool. Yeah, that's no. right. We have two bisexuals today. Yeah, yes. one gay man and two bisexual women. Is there? Are there, how many? Do we know any lesbians in the Free State Project? Uh, Caitlin, or are they all bisexuals? Well, I mean, there's Buzz. Yeah, Buzz is a lesbian, and like full on, full, full on. throttle lesbian. I'm pretty sure. And there are, as far as I know, they're both lesbians. They're up in the North Country. I've only met them once. Uh, they're in a committed okay. relationship. All and right. Caitlin so there, there also, are there are a few unicorns. Does in Caitlin there. identify? <laughs> Caitlin, I, Caitlin has the occasional attraction to a man, but she identifies as lesbian. Okay. All so, right. Fair enough. It is a sliding scale. Let's it is. Give, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you could even argue I'm probably like a little bit bisexual. A little bit, because I like trans guys who but are. That's not really. Have, that's, not, some, that's not. That's not. That's not. We're not counting that. No, I don't really count it either. They do have some female parts sometimes, most of the time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. All right, I'm, like- I'm, I'm getting politically incorrect. <laughs> this is flaming freedom, where LGBT libertarians shoot the poop. We'll be back shortly. Stick around, because we've got more fun stuff to talk about. We were just talking about Christians who put up an, a quote of Hitler on a billboard saying, we need to indoctrinate the youth into Christianity, and that way they'll stay Christians for the rest of their life. 
Hitler said that's how you indoctrinate people, get them at a young age before they can apply any kind of critical thinking skills that they might develop later in life, and then they'll stay indoctrinated. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's so honest. I, I, You know what? Thank you for being so honest. <laughs> uh, and, but we're moving on now. Uh, there's a link to that if you want to find out more about it on our show prep page. Go to flamingfreedom.com. And all of our thing, all the things we're talking about, I try to put a link to it so you can actually follow up yourself. If you think we're uh, elaborating, if you think that we're expounding in a way that is dishonest, go read the article for yourself. Yeah, and uh, and then you can criticize us. I welcome it. Post a comment on flamingfreedom.com. It's very easy to post comments. There's a really simple thing that just checks to see if you're a, a spam bot. And you can post comments. You don't have to register. You can. That makes it easier, but you don't have to. I would love to hear your comments. You can also p post comments on Facebook.com slash Flaming Freedom. You can go to Google Plus and post comments. You can go to our YouTube channel, <laughs> Prometheus Unchained. That's a long story, but we're called Prometheus Unchained on Facebook, on YouTube. It's not and that's that because long. Google's evil. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there's a link to it. You just click on any of our videos and you can go straight to our YouTube channel if that's complicated for you. And, and click like and subscribe there. So, uh, so there you go. Um, but let's move on. Supernatural was accused of queer baiting. And that, that goes into our Urban Dictionary Word of the Week. What is queer baiting? Do you want to take this, uh, Sabriel? Well, you have the Urban Dictionary okay. page pulled up. When people in the media, usually tel television and movies, add homoerotic tension between two characters to attract more liberal and queer viewers with the indication of them not ever getting together for real in the show slash book slash movie. Yeah, queer baiting is usually like there's there's homoerotic tension and there's like they joke about it. Like <laughs> like later later right. on, like a couple episodes later, it's like Ha ha, of course we're totally straight. Yeah, they almost add yeah. that. Like, it's, don't dare think that they're actually going to yeah. have a relationship. Can I just of tell you, sort? I know it's a little off topic, but we just watched the second Star Trek, or yeah, in my house, the new one oh, that was so streaming. Good. And my husband is somebody that's not very, he, he's he's not the eye rolling, like, he doesn't pick up on those, not, not I'm saying he's not intelligent. <laughs> he doesn't see the she, gay subject. Just admit it, Brittany. You like him for the D. I You're love there him. for the oh, D. Oh God. You've yes. talked to, you've bragged about the D. Oh, uh, the D so good. <laughs> um, you, he's just a piece of meat to you. Just admit it. He's so cute. <laughs> um no, we have a very substantial <laughs> emotional relationship as well. All right, all right, but anyway, all right. and we're watching it that. and you know, like the Spock and Kirk stuff's going on, and he goes, Are they serious? And like that's the first time he's ever like I've seen and picked up on some of like the the, the false homoerotic tension. That is not false. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm saying I'm saying that that queer baiting thing he's never he's never called it out, and he did. Like we're sitting there, and he goes, "Are you?" And I know I know there's a ship out there. I, You're I saying that someone ship. whose perceptions for such things okay look, was not I'm, impressive, Kirk and yet he, he he picked it up. He picked it up. Okay, but that's not queer baiting because queer baiting is. Is intent like as the name suggests, it's you're baiting the queers to reel them in, get them interested, and never giving the payout. It's a tease. Delivering. It's a big cock yeah. tease. It's yeah. a fucking cock tease. And I'm not, they never deliver. I'm not saying that they're that they're going to deliver on Kirk and Spock because obviously they're not. But that's not. They're not then like like don't, making fun of the don't gays bait for us. thinking. That's true, yeah. Don't tease us. Yeah. Although I gotta say. I'd rather have queer baiting than no gay subtext at all. Yeah. <laughs> because, mm. I mean, I love Supernatural. Someone, here, here's a question. Here's a thing to think about. If they bait us for a while, like eventually they're going to bait us, bait us, bait us, and then some show is going to be daring. Some show is going to go, yeah, I'm going there. I'm, we're going to go there. Right. And then they're going to reap the benefits of all that queer baiting. Some people think, okay. That's the free market at work. So... Supernatural what fans. What about Torchwood? What about Torchwood? Yeah, Supernatural fans left the Supernatural fandom around uh, season six and seven in large part. One, because the storyline got kind of, the writing took a nosedive during it, those it seasons. Did. It, it got better. It's gotten better, though. Can I kind of pause you for a moment? Okay. I, whatever you're thinking about right this moment, I want you to hold that thought because I don't want to interrupt you. Okay. I want you to finish. But let me just finish this the queer baiting example. It's a, okay. 
Because here's the here's the quote. There's always a quote or two. Hey, did you watch the new Supernatural episode <laughs> last night? <laughs> and then the next quote is, nah, all the queer baiting in it makes me want to bash my head in. I quit watching Sherlock for that reason, too. And yeah. I don't know about you. I've only watched the first season of Sherlock, but it is loaded. It is yeah. jam-packed with queer baiting. There's a lot of queer yeah. baiting in Sherlock. There's a lot. It is... <laughs> I mean, they're even, they're they're absolutely insinuating. There's a, they 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 had the they had uh, Watson saying, "No, I'm not gay. gay I'm yeah. not gay for Sherlock. My life did not end when he died and didn't actually die. That's not a spoiler. G- guess what, folks? There's a third season of Sherlock. Yeah, seriously. Sherlock Holmes isn't dead. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Yeah. Yeah. Go Any, ahead. Go anyway, ahead. Com- so complete your thought. So, yeah, Supernatural fans uh, stepped out in large part because they were sick of the queer baiting and they went to Teen Wolf because yeah. Teen Wolf doesn't do that. They, they uh, uh, w- uh, well, mostly they have gay characters. They do so have kudos gay characters, for that. But, and then they have characters that they imply something might happen. Yeah. And, and maybe it still will, though. It, exactly. There's, maybe it the, still will. there's the genuine. Like, I'm going to the, kick their asses if it doesn't. The show creators. <laughs> The show creators have not, like, thrown out... They've not made fun of the idea of Styles and Derek. They, they like, take that fan interest seriously to the point that, like, they made a video with the actors being like, hey, we're on a ship. Vote yeah. for us on the Teen Choice Awards. And the, and the showrunner, uh, Jeff Davis, is also gay. So they, they, like, they respect that subtext... And that's why a lot of Supernatural fans went over to Teen Wolf and dropped Supernatural. Now, see, mm. I love Teen Wolf. Why, why can't you watch them both, though? I don't... Oh, yeah. I mean, I watch yeah. both, but I think. Unless you just feel like it's absolutely necessary to punish them for how dare they bait us. Yeah, see, they're just, it's just Dean and Castiel is my OTP. It's so romantic. And <laughs> they can say that they're not gay for each other. All they want, but the looks, like the looks yeah. that they give each other, it's just, and also, um, do you feel like, how much of this is the actors not wanting to be seen I don't, as They're gay? funny. No, but no. they're hilarious when they're together. Like yeah. the actual real life actors, they're, they're, they're like, they're all married with children oh, yeah, and they're yeah. all they're over not, each they're other. They're definitely they not definitely gay. Definitely let's don't let's care. be clear about this. Yeah. They're, 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 none of the actors are gay. They're all married. Every single one of them. Although, Dean, the guy who plays Dean, Jensen Ackles. Uh, Jared Padalecki, the guy who plays Sam, and Misha Collins. Misha yeah. Collins, thank Although you, who plays I, uh, Castiel. They're I, all married and have kids. They're definitely not gay. I don't, I, think I don't want Misha to mislead Collins anyone. Is one hundred percent straight, but yeah, he, he posted. Well, he's he's sort of he's. I know he's he's extreme, incredibly sort of liberal in that he area. He posted RPF about him and one of his cast members on his Twitter. Okay. He posted he's, a link. He's liberal in that area. I don't yeah. think that necessarily makes him bisexual. That's, he might not, be a why, bit. that's not why I think he's a little bisexual. I okay. Say well, that. let's yeah. save that thought. We're going to be back in just a moment. I'm going to encourage our listeners to stick around. In a few minutes, we're going to talk about Misha Collins. Is he bi? <laughs> <laughs> well, what does Sabriel, why does Sabriel think that might that's be the case? Sad. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. Thank you for being patient and listening to some messages from our sponsors. This is Flaming Freedom, where LGBT libertarians shoot the poop every week from 10 a.m. to <laughs> noon on Sunday. I, I, I say uh, we talk about LGBT issues from a liberty perspective, but we veer off of that so often that I had actually uh, a listener complain that we were being uh, that we were fa- it was we were engaging in false advertising because oh. I talked about atheism a lot and other things. But I, I reserve the right to talk about whatever the hell I want. Heck yes. So we're shooting the poop, but we are LGBT for what it's worth. <laughs> so there you go. So uh, Misha Collins, uh, before you go on, okay. hold that thought. Hold that thought. Misha Collins is fracking brilliant. Yeah. I uh, yeah. if you want to if you want to raise your kids well, don't buy self help books about raising kids. Watch, subscribe to his Twitter and his YouTube. The guy is brilliant. His kids are going to grow up with no issues, no baggage. They're going to grow up feeling like their cho- all their choices are valid, and they're going to be amazing, confident uh, people. Because I, I watched him take his kids shopping, and then some other videos yeah, too. This yeah, is just one example. One. You see him take his kids shopping at the grocery store. We're going to cook something, and he let his kid control everything. I right, pick the ingredients you want to make. 
And then, and then he took him home, and he said, okay, we're going to cook it now. What do you want to do? Like, how much of this do you want to put in? Okay. And he let him, his kid control everything, and it was a disaster. <laughs> it was a disaster. This it, kid is way too young to be cooking. But he let him do it. It was just, and he made a YouTube video. I mean, obviously, um, you know, he can get away with a little bit. He's probably reasonably well-to-do financially. He can blow yeah. a bunch of money on ingredients that are going to result in a disaster. But... The point is, they had fun. He let his kid control it. He made his kid feel like, you're important. You're the center of the universe right now. What do you want to do? He let him do it. Uh, obviously, he's not going to let him burn himself or do anything like that. And uh, I always think, this guy is fracking brilliant. If people would uh, watch his YouTube channel, they'll, they'll, we'll all end up with well-adjusted kids. Most of the screwed-up issues that we deal with as a society will be gone in a generation or two. Uh, because people were raising their kids the way Misha Collins raises his kids. Go ahead. <clears throat> anyway, the reason I think that Misha Collins is not 100% straight. <laughs> so I'm not going so far as to call him bi. That's his label to choose or not choose or whatever. But his wife has written a book called um, like The Ultimate Guide to Threesomes or something like that. And... He was, and Misha Collins was recently interviewed by Larry King, and Larry King brought up this book and was like, so you've had threesomes with other women, and uh, and Misha said, yeah, I've had threesomes with other people. <laughs> 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 he felt the need to correct them. Well, that also could be okay. like a sexist statement. Like, why is it a threesome? It's got to be a man with two chicks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so... It is sexist to think that it should always be two, two women and a guy. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And a lot of guys, though, they're totally okay with that. Like, what? Like, women, they, they're, they have such a double standard about that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> and... You know, that doesn't that doesn't mean that there was like male male contact necessarily or that, you know, there was like a sexual thrill or anything. But it's quite possible that he's not 100 <laughs> percent straight. All or right. He's All at right, least dabbled. With the you know what? Here's the thing. Maybe he is 100 percent straight, but he didn't have any social anxiety about yeah. correcting them on that. He yeah. Felt, he felt like, you know what? I, I'm going to uh, I'm going to make a point here. Yeah, and he did so. And yeah. uh, why isn't this working? I'm trying to log in on Twitter right now. It's uh, funny because uh, Misha, it, Misha is very like wink and a nod to all of the Destiel fans. Destiel is the ship name for Castiel and Dean. And he has a he he <laughs> tweeted a YouTube video of him or a video. I'm not sure if it was on YouTube of him. Take he bought a sausage package and the. <laughs> The uh, the brand name is like DSL. It's like one letter. <laughs> it's it's one letter. It's one letter off of Des the Destiel ship name. And he he um took it to like UPS and mailed it. He you you see him writing down Jensen Ackles and mailing, which is the Dean actor, yeah. and mailing the DSL sausage. He's just messing with him. Yeah, yeah. messing with him. It I was don't really think, funny. I don't think Jensen Ackles is quite as on board with that and probably uh, he not. plays with it too a little yeah. but uh it, it, it seems like both uh he, he and jared are a little more feel a little Reticent. more of a need to clarify like no no this is not going to happen yeah this is folks this is not going to happen and that's why they're accused of queer baiting um yeah again i'm just gonna say uh misha collins is he's fracking brilliant yeah fracking brilliant i, I he's amazing I, I think he's completely underrated and he and he's he uh, he appreciates his fans. There's no doubt about it. Did you know that Melissa Etheridge got married? No, oh, I didn't gay, know that. Gay news: Mer Melissa Etheridge got married um, a week ago in California. To, That's good to announce. Uh, that is good. Uh, if you want, if you give me a link, her. if you give me a link to an article about that, I'll sure post thing. it in the show. Prep. And you should you should also post the link to. Uh, to Misha Collins mailing sausage to Jensen Ackles. If you give me that link, I will absolutely post <laughs> I, that I because we are will. totally on board with sucking Misha Collins' proverbial wiener today <laughs> on Flaming Freedom because he's freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, sociopathy. Now, this article is by The Telegraph. It says why psychopaths are more successful. It's true. It's crazy. It's a little it's a little creepy, but that's because most people have a notion of psychopathy or sociopathy as a binary thing. They think Hannibal Lecter. It's and like that's a, terrifying. No, it's an empathy scale. It's it's a Right. 
Well, and, and then if you, you have to think of empathy as obviously a useful trait, obviously. Yeah. I like to think I'm reasonably empathic. I'm, I'm able to empathic. put myself in the shoes of someone else, someone else and feel their pain. And that helps me to relate to other people better. Mm -hmm. But I also like to think that I'm a very objective person. And I like the example I want to give is house. Okay. Right? Yeah. The, the house, uh, Greg house Greg on house. the show house. He's a doctor. He's a brilliant doctor. And why is he a brilliant doctor? Because he separates very clearly. He objectively separates his emotional reaction to people, which ca might cause him to be a bad doctor from objectively evaluating what's going on and diagnosing people. I can't help but wonder if, there is a doctor out there somewhere who inspired this show who's like, wow, if only, if only I could really ask people direct questions, but I have yeah. to be so politically correct, then I could really, I could be such a better, a much better diagnostician. But everybody lies. Everybody lies. <laughs> right. And, uh, and House acknowledges this. And the fact that he's, he's, he's clearly not a sociopath. He's not. No. Not a, in a binary way. I mean, obviously, he has empathy. They pointed this out in the show. In fact, the, the, I would say the crux of the show is showing that this cold-hearted guy actually does care about people. Yeah. And he often, and, and they, they do it many times throughout the show. They say, look, he's this cold-hearted sociopath. He seems racist at times. Oops. He seems <laughs> racist at times. <laughs> he seems racist at times. He seems sexist at times. But really, it's just him being incredibly direct and honest. And addressing issues and uh, and end up being a and, and he ends up being a better doctor about it. So this is called why sociopaths or psychopaths, excuse me, are more successful. And this art article delves into it. And one of the things that points out right away is it's not a black and white thing. It's not Hannibal Lecter or uh, Mother Teresa. <laughs> OK, <laughs> uh, which that's probably a bad that's example. because She was kind of messed up, actually. Yeah, um, that's a bad example. But you know what I mean? Stereotypically speaking. It's not like that. It's a sliding scale, and it, it may very well be, particularly depending on what field you're in, it may very well be that a little bit of sociopathy is beneficial significantly to your objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to separate your emotional response, your, empath your empathic response, from a more objective evaluation of the criteria and the data is helpful. Is you know, that shocking? No, no be shocking. my role, you got to be a little bit like that. I mean, in human resources, I mean, everyone, everyone assumes we're either just, you know, um, you know, empathetic idiots. Or all we do is say, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me walk you through. But that's totally not it. I'm basically an you employment also have to know lawyer. When to fire someone. I'm basically an yeah. employment lawyer, but uh, without the law degree. So interesting. Yeah. Hold that thought because I'd like to hear more of your cool. take on that when we come back. This is Dale at Flaming Freedom, where LGBT libertarians shoot the poop. We're going to be back in just a moment after some words from our sponsors, so stay tuned. We were just talking about psychopaths on <laughs> Flaming Freedom. Go to flamingfreedom.com and check out our website. There's links to all sorts of Flaming Freedom content and websites like Facebook and Google Plus and Ustream and the Liberty Radio Network. We are also on Skype right now if you'd like to join in and say anything about the conversation that we've had thus far or if you'd like to bring up a new topic. The Skype account is In Your Head Shows, so just Skype us at In Your Head Shows and join the conversation. This is your host, Dale. This is Brittany. And Sabrielle. Sabrielle, you had something you wanted yes. to add. So this kind of brings it around because this references Sherlock. Oh, the, hey. uh, it, there's a great article on a the Aeon Magazine website. Tons of great articles, actually. But this one points out that... Um, that empathy, that in a way, uh, sociopathy almost enables empathy because actually seeing through another person's eyes and imagining what they're feeling is, um, easier to do when you're emotionally detached because when you're, because own, otherwise you insert yourself. Yes. When your own emotions are contaminating it, you think, oh, how would I feel in this situation instead of, how would this, given this person's background, how would they feel? How would they react? Right. So it shows, it talks about how Sherlock is a good, it, it has research, but it also talks about how <laughs> Sherlock is a good example because that's part of what makes him a great detective is getting yeah. in somebody else's head and predicting what he thinks they would do. Brittany, you're yes. a human resources expert. I am. 
Uh, no, it, it's very much you can't you can't be emotionally invested because people come to you with their problems when you're doing employee relations, and you can't just go, oh god, that's so horrible. You have to say, I, I mean, you you have to keep them employed, you have to keep them productive, and so you have to detach from the human element of what's going on, and you actually have to go. Okay, how can I help you? Or you how you are a resource for this company, and yeah. we need you to be productive. Yeah, right. absolutely. And so it, it's very much, you know, because you see all sorts of different things. Anything? I mean, you think everybody? You, thinks, you can. You could end up having a. Uh, I imagine you could end up having a, a, uh, a bias that makes you uh, have a have a sort of a a contradiction of of. I'm I have blanking. to. You have to act and think things that I might do. You know, like jokes that I might tell in somebody tells it in the workplace. <laughs> right. And I'm like, you can't do that. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like, yes, I wish it was an, if we were at a bar, I would laugh with you, but I can't. Like, right. we're at work. Like, this isn't the place of the time, and, and you can't, and I can't tell them that. I can't yeah. tell them I would have laughed at your joke. So basically, no. Flaming Freedom is all on board with uh, Go Sociopathy. Go. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Woo. Um, uh, faggot RuPaul, <laughs> trannies need to get stronger. Uh, this is from the trans advocate. Now, this show, uh, I, I want to be on record as saying that we're a huge advocate for trans issues and we try yes. to be on a regular mm-hmm. basis. I, that's why I really want to get to this subject, this show. Uh, we are in the last segment of the show. Um, this, this article is called Faggot RuPaul colon trannies need to get stronger. And what it's really addressing is that RuPaul uses the word tranny. Uh, I will say that tra- trans is a is a sliding scale, like so many other things. Just like homosexuality is a sliding scale, there are, many people are actually bisexual and somewhere on the scale. Very few people, I'd say, are completely homosexual or completely heterosexual. Trans is the same way, and I can't help but imagine that that drag queens are somewhere on that scale. Well, right. The, I mean, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but the word tranny is broadly considered an, a derogatory insult to someone who is trans in some way. And I, 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 I tend to agree. I try not to use the word. And, and frankly, what it comes down to is this, if, I, if I know it hurts someone's feelings, if I know it offends someone, then unless I have a big beef with those people and I feel like it's just I'm trying to be honest, I, I don't have a beef with trans people. That's the thing. Uh, I, and I feel like I should respect their wishes. And that word is considered derogatory. And I tend to use words like trans folk, trans man, trans woman, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and those seem to me more respectful. And I don't, and I feel like, um, I feel like it's, you know, if someone's asking to be referred to in a different way, tranny though, why is not one of, respect that? Tranny is one of those words that I, that trans people ha- are trying to take back. So I think it's some trans people, not some, everyone is, is some on board with that. People, yeah. Right. So, like I, I'm, I'm one of those gay people who's not a fan of the word queer. I don't want to take that word back. I, I don't particularly like that word. Oh, but I, I, it's okay if you're okay with being called that. I mean, I'm I not like, trying to be the tyrant like of queer. the words. I like queer because it's easier to say than LGBT, and <laughs> okay. and it's um, well, then you have LGBTQ. Have you seen the LGBTQ? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. And then uh, my opinion on LGBTQ is you don't get a letter until you decide. So if you're questioning, <laughs> you don't get a letter yet. You figure it out, and then you get a letter. And also, queer is <laughs> I like queer because it's less restrictive than bisexual. Bisexual seems to uh, endorse the gender binary a little bit, and um, and. But what if you are? I mean, what? What if you are bisexual and not? And not, que- well, not queer. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I mean, I, I could be attracted to people who do not fit on the, I am attracted okay. to people who don't fit on the gender binary. So and I'm not though. Huh? I'm not. And I think some people might be that way. For instance, I'm gay. I'm only attracted to males. Mm-hmm. Now I'm, I'm not, I don't care about genitalia. And, and, and that's why for me, it's not an issue if someone is a trans male. As long as they are, male. I still, I'm attracted to male features mm-hmm. pretty distinctively, pretty clearly. Uh, I'm not on the. I'm not very far on the scale of bisexuality, so I'm I'm fairly binary. Um, but someone I could see someone being like they're attracted. They're either attracted to ma- someone's. A, if someone's masculine, they can be attracted to that for a certain reason. If someone's feminine, they can be attracted to that for a certain reason. Yeah, but I'm, maybe they're not. Oh, they're not big on someone who's ambiguous. I I dig the ambiguity. I dig. That's cool. I dig the. Amb- I, I think it's great if you are. Yeah. But I'm just saying that maybe someone is better described by bisexual do you think rupaul should is out of line yes 
I think this is a hard one. I think this is a really hard one. I think it's one. being douchey to people who who could use a little bit of, uh, who are My being, ba- catching the shit right now, big time, and they don't deserve it. Yeah. And I think he could uh, exercise a little bit more empathy. I think he's being a little bit too psychopathic. <laughs> I think I think he could. Uh, I mean, you know, someone doesn't want to be called. You know what? I'm not going to call Paul a nigger. I think that would be really rude. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to say the N word, by the way. I'm going to say the word that I mean, but I'm not going to call someone that. Yeah. But it's important to make the distinction. And I'll say tranny to talk about the word tranny, but I'm not going to call someone a tranny because that's disrespectful. Yeah. And I'm only, not going to call Paul. I'm not going to call Paul a nigger because that would be really rude and disrespectful. And I don't think he'd appreciate that. And so if he expresses, he says, look, I don't want to be called that. I'm going to respect that. And if there's a trans person who says, look, I feel like that's derogatory and it's insulting and it hurts my feelings, I'm not going to call him a tranny. I think that's one of those, uh, you know, and I, and I know it's part of my vocabulary and I think it's one that's just got to be erased. It's not a huge part of my vocabulary, but I, you know, I, it's not something that I want to, that I'd, I'm not in that situation, but. It, you know, there's been enough negative backlash where I just feel like it's not appropriate. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. If, if if you know someone and that person has expressed to you, I don't mind being called that. I use the word for myself. Th- then it's OK. But I would say by default, it's it's uh, there's enough people who have expressed that they're insulted by it. that They think it's condescending and that it it's, has derogatory intent. That by default you should not assume it's okay. Yeah. Also, also he's using a double standard for faggot. The article goes on to talk about how he says derogatory slurs are always an outward projection of a person's own poisonous self-loathing. So he he was he he got really offended when other people have said faggot. So that's hypocritical. That's very yeah. hypocritical. To, and then go on and say, oh, tr- you know, trannies just need to s- toughen up. I'm gonna call them that, and they just need to toughen up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, toughen up to faggot then. Uh, yeah. People are gonna call you faggot. Just deal with it. it it's almost I don't, like I don't we like went it. through I, worse I, things. I hate that. I hate that that persona of like I went through worse things, so you can toughen up to this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hate that. Now, like, talk well, about if you went lack through such worse things, why can't you handle it when someone calls you or, a faggot? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or why can't you handle it? Toughen up, RuPaul. Toughen or, up. Or why thicken your skin? Why can't you be more sensitive to not hurting other people in the past? Like, do you? You know, some people are like, it's because of my hardships, I'm a strong person I am. Like, that doesn't necessarily have to be true. Like, do we have to beat our children for them to be strong? No, they're just going to be child I, I beaters. I hope not. I hope people aren't going to take that away from it. No. <laughs> you, you end up with people with issues. You end up with people who are... Uh, maladjusted. Who are, yeah, horribly maladjusted. If you, if you think, oh, I'm going to beat my kids so they'll toughen up. I'm going to put my kids through hardship so they can face the real world. That's not That's the way. That's messed no. up. That is messed up. Don't do, I, I, it sucks. I, I, RuPaul, I know you've been through a lot of shit. Uh, it sucks. Um, don't dish it out to other people. This is the cycle of abuse, right? Yeah. It is. When it's you're absolutely. a kid in high school and you're the freshman and everyone's picking on you, you think, well, I, I took my knocks, so now I get I to pick be, on the I'm freshman. I'm a senior now. Yeah, I got yeah. to beat up the freshman. I, yeah. I, went through my, I went through my abuse. Now it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> That's horrible. It's horrible. How, do we make I the think... world a better place by ending the cycle of abuse. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's how legal legal immigrants see illegal immigrants. They're like, I had to do all this, so now you have to. Thank you, folks, for joining us. We'll be back next week from 10 a.m. to noon on the Liberty Radio Network and Ustream. Hope you'll join us. Go to face, face, flamingfreedom.com <laughs> and check out our website. Thanks. Hello, this is Delbert. Pikachu, Pikachu, testing, testing. Should I say Pikachu? If you want, use whatever words you like. I like it because it has hard consonants. Yeah. Pikachu. Pikachu. I can laugh. <laughs> I can. I need something real to laugh at. <laughs> Let me show you my penis. Hold on. Oh, geez. This will get you laughing. No, no, no. Okay. All right.